It's going to be loud. There it is. Oh, this is one of my favorite tunes that have ever existed. Uh, hello, my name is Dan Pacheco. Uh, I'm the uh, host of this new podcast we have um, called Weird Number One. And uh, today I am joined by Stacey Payne of Preferred Real Estate Brokers. Uh, she's one of the coolest agents. We'll get to know why in a minute here. Um, but Stacey, little known fact about that song. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. So that was the original song or the, the, the yeah, the, the original song that actually um, Freddie Mercury heard and created Bohemian Rhapsody. Like he was just like at a, like a, like a CBGB kind of like club one night and he heard that exact song. And he's like, I need to write Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, I like it even more now. Incredible, right? Yeah. It's pretty um, total, totally made that up. Uh, Did you just make that up? Uh, totally. So now we need to sing Bohemian Rhapsody. You want to do it? Podcast. Yeah. Go ahead. Hit, I'll, you, you be the lead. I'm just a small boy. <laughs> 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 and that's the podcast, guys. Uh, we have it here first. Got your journalism. Uh, Stacey Payne comes out as a small boy. Uh, <laughs> guys, uh, okay, so here's, here's the deal, okay? Like I said, Stacey Payne, uh, if you can't already tell, is a delightful person. Uh, you are such a vibrant, super-duper great agent uh, when it comes to real estate um, and many, many, many more billion other things that just make you so cool. So, Stacey, thank you so much for coming on to the show today. Thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. So tell the world a little bit about just yourself. Give us, you know, your, you know, who who is Stacey Payne? You know, how would you describe yourself? I am <laughs> a realtor. Yep. I've done, uh, been doing real estate for 10 years now. And I did hair for over 20 years. Okay. Um, I'm a mama, homeschool mom. Heck yeah. And, um, I mean, that's, that's, and that's, traveler. that's, that's, that's already like, a lot of things right literally there. Literally like my life. It's like, Travel. I work to travel. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's, that's the benefit of working in real estate, especially at the level that you do is that you can go out there, earn the trust, earn the business, get it closed and then enjoy your life, mm -hmm. you know, and that's a beautiful thing. So let's get into some of those, the, the, those bits there. Um, okay. So let's actually, you know what, let's go a different direction first. Cause I want to hit all those things too, because again, when you say mom, you've got one of the coolest kids out there, super awesome. Um, you know, hair, you've done my hair before. We'll talk mm -hmm. about that. Uh, so the real reason or the first reason we have you on the podcast here is because you wanted to have your own podcast and you're, you're actually in the works of creating your own one, uh, yes. right now. Right. Um, it's going to be a different format than this. It's not going to have a trophy with a goat on there. It's not going to have, um, you know, another trophy. It's going to have something altogether, right? Yeah. Focusing more on the spooky side of things. Yeah, I want to do obscure, obscure real estate. Talk to me about obscure real estate. What does it mean to you? So everything weird, like we're talking haunted houses, homes that can't sell because there's some weird spirit that like won't leave the home okay. or, um, uh, I'm sure you've seen like these, you know, on social media where you see these crazy photos of 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 homes where people have carpeted the whole bathroom. Oh, just oh, yeah. Like, it's like, just like, how do you what clean are they that? thinking? Yeah. How like, what are you that? even thinking? Or, yeah, I want to list my home, my home. But, you know, like, I don't want to go into the hoarder thing because it's a kind sure. of sad mental illness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the but like there's just it's just crazy. Like yep. you like we're trying you need to help us help you sell this home and right just 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 crazy obscure weird it's, it's so stuff. i mean that in itself i mean i'm already interested into it and i mean when you first pitched the idea to me i was instantly in with every word you were saying I'm like yes yes tell me more yeah because i mean it, it is a fun thing to tap into the oddities you know and i think that's always been a part of the human curiosity right like you know what's beyond what, what's abnormal what's beyond the you know expected right and what better way is opposed you know to, to get a glimpse of that shit uh, as opposed to seeing inside someone's home <laughs> yeah you know like, like what have they, what have they here's done here's my nice little three bedroom two bath home it just looks basic like no let's talk about like the really right gritty weird stuff. right like and let's so, get in it's, it's like it's fun Why yeah not, right? absolutely i mean and, and that, that format in itself you know the uh you know the murder you know the, not murder mystery but like you know the yeah. the podcast or like you know the, that, that genre crime murder kind of thing is a really popular one so i definitely see maybe not focusing on that per se but i, I think that still taps into kind of like that macabre kind of spooky kind of eerie kind of vibe there yeah. um and i mean really central florida people don't think of it as like a savannah or like a new york or a boston you know kind of thing or a salem kind of thing but i mean there's a lot of like extra you know or like supernatural spiritual spooky kind of things around here right there is and in florida the state of florida you don't have to disclose 
whether someone's died in the home or anything that has of to course do that. that's that's it's so fl florida i mean we're in florida that's so Come florida like yeah, yeah you know yeah okay so, so i mean you, obviously i'm sure you have some things in mind like some places you would want to cover first like so what are some of the cool things about orlando ish that fits into that spooky eerie or just really odd vibe beyond the obvious florida man <laughs> Well, I mean, I also work with a lot of investors too. So another like little section of that, that I would like when, when investors go in and they flip the home and they get into the drywall and they find oh. weird stuff in the wall, oh, yeah. like things that have been hidden and weird letters and messages Ew. and just like, um, it's just, it's interesting. Yeah. Like I can't wait to just, no. you know, dig in and, and, you know, talk about it. I saw a funny post, um, somebody was flipping a kitchen, right? And so they were redo basically gutting it and they were installing a whole new island in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> and so they got a pretty realistic looking full skeleton, dressed them up in like a, you know, what you would expect like a contractor's, you know, outfit to look like kind of thing and put it there and then, you know, put the granite on top of it or the marble or whatever it was. And so, yeah, yeah I don't know, home 50 years from now or whenever it gets, you know, redone again, Someone's going to have to uncover a full size, you know, fake, obviously, yeah, but human skeleton. Like, how would you react if you were like just like tearing up the carpet or tearing up the counters, and all of a sudden, ah, there it is. Like it's hilarious because somebody <laughs> had a great, you know, sense of humor that <clears throat> literally put that there on purpose. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I was showing a home one time, um, in Lake Nona, a vacant home, beautiful, still, you know, new built. It was only like maybe three years old, mm -hmm. and um. We're walking through and the, you know, possible buyer opens up one of the closets and there's a Jason doll just sitting there with a knife. Like, oh, my like, God. Just like, and she jumped so <laughs> high. Like, she literally, like, it was out of control, like, how she was able to, like, go in the air that high. And I, when I looked in the closet to see why she jumped, I could not stop. I, like, now I'm, like, on the floor laughing because it's hilarious. Like, that seller knew what they were doing. Oh, like, yeah. That's the, hilarious. The Nobody expected that. Bought it or they got it from the garage yes. and they set it up. I mean, just <laughs> probably snickering and giggling the entire time. Yes. And then boom, there it is. <laughs> right. I mean, I wonder if there's were cameras set up or I mean, I don't I mean. I don't think so. But just, may, I mean, I would have put a I would want to see the reaction. Yeah. Right. I want to. I would put a camera. Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a show in itself right there. It kind of goes like back to like those hidden camera, you know, gotcha shows kind of thing. Yeah, That'd maybe be so we should funny. do haunted house open houses. That would be so freaking fun. How cool would that be? That'd be really cool. Yeah. Uh, so talk to me a little bit more about, I mean, have you have you experienced anything? Like what, what got you into the idea of doing like a, a haunted or spooky or oddities kind of style show and, and with like realistic correlated? Like how do you, like what, what got you into that idea? I no, nothing really, but just the idea of it just sounds super. Like fun. you didn't have like a, like, a, a I, premonition, or you didn't have like a a ghost of like one of like the like the you know like the the ancestors of yours coming through and said, no. "Stacy, <laughs> it's your peepa," or anything like that. You didn't have anything like that. No, 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 okay. not at all, not at all. Just I just find fun. it super interesting. Hell yeah. Like it's like I mean, there's a million and one podcast shows about real estate. Right. Why not have one that like, has? Why little, not have you know, one that's fun and cool? Ghost and plasma we can try on to, it dig into a story and get some more information or yeah you know now, would you consider orlando to be like a haunted city because when you people don't I mean every obviously every place has history you mm -hmm. know and, and spooky macabre stuff right um but people don't th typically think of orlando as a historical city and obviously i understand why but there's a lot of weird history here too yeah right a lot of weird things have happened i mean it just well, I could go on a whole tangent of, you know, Florida craziness and stuff. Um, I mean, but it, would you, are there ghost tours around town? Are there cool things to take a part of? Or is it just like. No, there's not. But, and, and, and it's okay though, because I don't think the podcast has to only be in Orlando. No. I, I mean, I could touch on all places all around the country yeah. just to, you know, talk about it. And, right. And have fun with it. It doesn't have to be specific to Orlando. Right. Um, I mean, in Orlando, I find it kind of weird. People spend millions of dollars for these homes right in Disney. And it literally looks like Alice in Wonderland in their front yard. Like that's some major Disney loving stuff going on. Yeah, right like that's extra. That's ultra me. extra. So would you? Yeah. I mean, so would you take something like you said? It doesn't have to be like spooky. Just something that's you obscure. know obscure. So would you qualify? You know, an overloaded themed Disney or a home themed Disney. Like, it was, would that be obscure? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I've seen some stuff. I mean, like Golden Oak out there, I think, I mean, it's really cool. Uh, they have, it's more like little nuances and stuff. And so you'll see, um, you know, and for those of you that don't know, like Golden Oak is like 
ultra lux, right? It's on Disney property. Oh, yeah. um, really nice homes. Uh, and sections of it are kind of themed like the um, like kind of like snow white cottages. I mean, granted, they're still very luxe, but it has a whole different vibe, right? Mm-hmm. Or even inside some of the homes there that look like they, you know, they're, you know, three or four million or so. They have like the Cinderella mice painted very subtly on the baseboard. So like, cute little details like that. Yeah. But we also have some where like every room is like a huge primary color. It is under the sea or it is, you know, Bana Sabuena. Yeah. It is whatever else Disney kind of thing. It's just like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. We have one of the Airbnbs. Um, I think it's in Champions Gate and it is Harry Potter. And it's so cool. Yeah. though. It's super cool. Yep. Like They really did a good job. I mean, these mural are these muralists go in and they do i mean they really go like it's perfect they go hard on it i mean themed out like crazy it's awesome now those are those are probably what the vacation rental homes and stuff Mm -hmm. right and so people are booking these through airbnb or whatever service and i mean talk to me a little bit about that i mean we obviously have a huge 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 part of that you know of our our market here in central florida a lot of agents are trying to figure out how to work with that and stuff Mm -hmm. um i mean have you just a random question like have you worked in that or you start started to work in like People that want to do that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Airbnb is a great way to make money. You'll make way more money Airbnb at your home than just doing a, you know, typical, you know, 12 month lease. Right. Um, but the I mean, you definitely want to theme the home and have it super, you know. And I think once the home starts to age, you want to keep it up because people right. will spend the most amount of money if you keep it modern. Right. And like it still has to feel good. So it has to be comfortable, you know, attractive. And again, to your point, you know, if it's, there's a lot of things you have to be aware of these days, right? It's like, you know, you could have, you could love, you you know, be in love with this movie franchise, but all of a sudden then, you know, it gets canceled for whatever reason. They're like, oh, shit. Uh, The minions now, they they were just arrested last week in Hollywood. I can't, you know, (laughs) (laughs) whatever it is, you know. Um, So you have to be worried about that, but also again, just the upkeep of it too. Uh Um, So those are really good points. And I mean, you're competing with, you know, actual disney actual universal hotels and stuff right right um so i mean it, it is a really cool thing and again that's why it's cool to work with you but uh you touched on something you said you're creating like the experience right and that's one of the things i love about working with you from my perspective is that you are an experience right i mean just being around stacy Payne, you're definitely getting an awesome vibe and your customers mm-hmm. they appreciate the stacy Payne experiences in, in it as well and people are are looking for that more these days right I assume that if you're, I know you're, you're a realtor, then yes, you can help me buy, sell, or invest. Right. We Biggest question can. though is, okay, well, what specifically about you am I connecting with? Am I going to have a fun time? Am I going to enjoy this? And how could you not? I mean, if you're watching this, this is the first time or listening to this, and this is the first time you're experiencing Stacy in whatever way this is, you're clearly seeing that she's awesome. So how do you, I mean, is this a caricature of you, like what you're giving me or what you're giving us? Or is this just like you all in, all out, every single day, no matter where you are, who you're with? I'm always all in. I give, I mean, I literally bust my ass in every single section of that whole entire transaction. I'm yeah. making sure that everything is done properly. I'm making sure that everything is, you know, like, it's just, it's an important, it's a huge investment mm-hmm. purchasing a home, but it also should be fun. Like right. you need to relax. You need to enjoy you know, looking for the home, you need to, you know, like I can help give you ideas of, okay, everything's perfect except this one thing. Okay, sure. perfect. Let's talk about that. Right. Let's figure out how we can make this per- this home perfect. So let's figure out how we can write the offer to right. at least, you know, make all the numbers work. Um, but just having fun. Yeah. Like, just And you so know? two things there that I want to tuck on is, okay, one, having fun, which sounds like a great thing. But as you know, the last two years have, it's become more challenging to have fun <laughs> in real estate. And yeah. you're saying writing the offer, again, going back to the last two years, you've, every agent has had tons of practice writing offers because you've had to yeah. like submitted like, you know, like 14 uh, for the average buyer, as opposed to it being like one or two in the past kind of thing, right? So how did you, how did you keep your business going? How did you keep the hope alive with your customers? And also, again, keeping the fun a part of it through, you know, probably one of the craziest, most stressful modern markets we've seen. How, how, how'd you do it? Well, I didn't have to write 14 offers good. for anyone. Okay. So that's good. Okay. Um, I think it's important that I always try to touch base with the, if I'm on the buyer side with the listing agent to or, you know, get a rapport and build a relationship from day one of going to show the property. And they understand where I'm coming from that, you know, I get a, I get, have a good conversation with them and they do want to work with me. So if you, you know, I've 
on my on the listing side, I've had buyers agents call and I'm just like, please, please, I hope I don't. You know what I mean? I hope right. my clients don't like this offer because you're kind of. I don't really want to work with you, you know, like, I mean, if, if I have to, I have, you know, of course, but it's just like, it makes a difference with who another agent is working with. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps to get your offer accepted. And it also helps to try to gauge on how I should write the offer so that it is the winning offer. Um, you know, what are the terms that they're looking for? Like, right. there's so much more that goes into it than just throwing an offer out with a couple of numbers on it. Like, what exactly right. are your sellers looking for? What can we do for the sellers to make it easier transition for them out of this home? I like, it's that's just, it's so, huge. That's so yeah. simple, but so freaking smart and often not really done. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, because every agent, you know, they pride them, they pride themselves on their five-star customer service. And I mean, sometimes it's phony. Sometimes they're not really giving that. But in your case, you absolutely are. You're giving more than that to your customers. Uh, but usually it stops there, right? Typically, and just again, this is why I think that real estate is one of the most conflicted industries on earth. I mean, I, I think it's one of the best for many reasons, but it's also very conflicted because you have internal conflict, right? Depending on what side of the deal you're on, whether you're representing the buyer or the seller, mm -hmm. you're describing the same room as two totally different views. Either, oh, it's so cozy and easy to take care of or way too effing small, right? right. Depending kind of thing, right? So there's internal conflict and then typically internal conflict meets external conflict external conflict shows up on the other side of the closing table. So, mm -hmm. hey, listen, I know that we had a great time, you know, the, the last realtor happy hour, you're the best, but it looks like we're gonna be working the same deal together and now all bets are off and we have to go to war, right? You, you have that kind of thing. Just, I don't yeah. know why, but I have to fight you now. Typically that's how it goes. But you're going out there and you're actually making the bridge, making it cool and saying to the seller and the listing agent to the seller, what can we do to make this really cooler for you? We are That's in Florida huge. transaction brokers. So we all need to remember as a transaction broker that everyone involved just wants to get to the closing table. And why Seller wants their that? money and yes. buyer wants that home. Yes. So what do we need to do as buyer and seller agent need to do to make that happen? Right. We're middlemen. So just bridge the gap and, and bridge the gap and then yes and, and that's you, you said it everyone's working for the same goal yeah so it's like it's, it's almost like you know like i don't know why i have this image in my mind i mean recently again like I, i'm into cats as you know now i just love cats now i just imagine like eight cats in a giant pillowcase and each one's just like running in different directions like right. just move forward it's out of this thing but we're, everyone's like running the same di or different directions there um and that's how it works in real estate typically right hey as far as agents go how do you get paid you get paid percentages of, you know, the the closing, right? Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it be nice if you deserve it? And in no case you do, but you know, the other agents be like, also, well, all right, yeah, I would like to get paid uh, a little bit more. I'd rather have, you know, six thousand dollars than five thousand dollars. You know, kind of things so like why why fight? Why not just make things cool and get it done? Yeah, I mean, I think what you're touching on is that it's the sales price is what you get the commission on. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, do we really care about the commission or do we care about the referral the referral so true stat so not... i want mm -hmm. my clients or whether i'm on the seller or the buyer side right so happy yes you can that... say the f word you can say fucking okay good. also because... here let's introduce your soundbite this is stacy Payne's soundbite right here by the way too motherfucking soul that's what? right you're gonna hear a lot of that because yeah <laughs> just raise the roof too <laughs> i love it yes yes <laughs> um yeah i mean well, I want referrals, so yep. I want you happy. That's like, if, if I work from a place of I want referrals, then what am I going to do? I'm going to make you happy. Yeah. So whether it's if I'm on the buyer side, then of course my commission's going to go down because right. I've done my job. Right. If I'm on the seller side, my commission's going to go up. Why? Because I've done my job. Mm -hmm. But it's not about that. It's right. really about the referral. Are you happy? Will you send me someone new? That's Will you about. work with me when you're ready to buy or sell again? Yeah. The repeat. Will you send mom and dad to me and whoever else like exactly that you know you did a good job when you get the referral and, and you're like oh my god thank you a year ago apparently i did a great job because here's my referral <laughs> and, and that's the deal and i mean that that is i love that you mentioned that because that that really is what leads to what most agents would consider to be a successful business for themselves right mm -hmm. um wonderful okay great you converted somebody and the you know they you, you fought the deal and closed with you but that's the question that's the sign of a truly a job well done is if you're getting referrals, right? right? Every agent on the back of their business card, on their car magnet, on any anything they do, right? Even, yeah, in my, I live and die by referrals. The highest compliment is the best referral kind of thing. Okay, like I get it, but I always go back to this 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 little 
image uh, here, the setting here. Okay, so let's say for instance that um, you know I have Hosea Fleming, our broker's credit card on file in my, or my memory, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna go like we're gonna take us out to a really nice lunch on his dime, um, which I do all the time. Let's get lunch after this or something, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so uh, we have a server here, and every time they come by and you know pour our water, they go, oh, "Hey, by the way." I love tips. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, awesome. Yeah, that's right? pretty. Cool. And then every yeah. time they come by, oh, make sure that you guys have enough bread. Uh, by the way, I live and die by tips. Just to let you guys know, okay? Yeah. Uh, boom, boom, boom. And then every time they come by, uh, tips, 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 tips. It's just me. Like, get the hell out of here, Gypsy. Like, it's gonna feel weird, right? Yeah. But that's the same thing that, that is a most, really good point. Most Absolutely. agents do is they just ask for tips, ask, 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 or ask for referrals, ask for referrals, right. ask for referrals. You shouldn't ask for them. You're generating them. You're earning like, them. Do you love me? Do you love me? <laughs> exactly. Love me? Exactly. <laughs> You're inspiring them to give you their referrals. You're not yeah. asking for it, and, but, but they're doing it. That's awesome. That, that is, that is perhaps the most significant and simplest. Are you good at what you do? What's your referral game look like? Mm-hmm. Just like that. And to you me shouldn't ask for it, though, because no. it's not going to feel exactly. genuine when it actually happens. That's my point, like, right? Yeah. You don't have to. People are going, Stacey, you did such a great job. Um, I would, you know, my, whoever the hell it is in my mm-hmm. life is thinking about buying or selling. I want to put you in touch with them. Boom. Done. Right? I mean, and you, that, that's, that's who you are. Like, mm-hmm. that's who Stacey Payne is. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, talk to me, because you, you, you mentioned hair before, right? You touched my hair before, and typically I am, I mean, clearly I'm a self-cut uh, guy at home. I've been doing this for like the last eight years or so, um, but I let you get your hands on my head, and you turn me in to what I would consider to be at least one of the top three or four hottest BTS-looking members. <laughs> I mean, I was feeling myself, and you gave me this really awesome, like, platinum blonde hair, which before I had done that before in the self-box kit, you know, back in high school, and I was orange. I think the term mm-hmm. I used was uh, fried orange cat is what I looked like right Mm -hmm. um but you smoothed it out and it looked awesome um and as i got to know you through the process of it uh you told me that you mean you weren't just you know doing hair you know you were i mean you were you worked for major comp you know like 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 campaign ads and stuff like adidas and things like that with the hair and you know that kind of style kind of thing talk to me about all things hair because you see it as an an art form right it's like it's not like a a side hustle per se it's what i thought was really cool like some people, you know, they they go and they go fishing to unwind or, you know, or they paint or they draw to, you know, let that creative avenue out. Your creative avenue is hair, clearly, right? And oh, so yeah. talk to me about all things. Um, Yeah, I mean, I don't even, I mean, I've started, I started doing hair because I was like, oh, let me get through college okay. and not serve tables. And because I love doing hair. Not that there's anything wrong with serving tables. I've definitely served tables. Sure. Um, But... I just got into it and then I ended up getting like stuck in it just because I loved it so much. I've done lots of traveling with it. I've done a lot of magazine work, Mm -hmm. um, all kinds of ads. Like you said, Adidas, um, um, did like a huge Adidas golf ad. And that's really cool. Like I can't, I don't even know like how, like I'd have to look back at my resume because I don't really do it full time anymore. So, you know, there's just so many things I've done. I'll be like, Oh yeah, I did that. That was cool. You know? Um, it's just, it's fun and it's relaxing. Like, I just enjoy, I don't have to really think when I'm doing hair. Right. I mean, I guess I think when I'm doing a formula for color, but I don't really think anymore either. But it's like, just I don't like even muscle measure memory anymore. I do you. it by eye. Yeah. And, it's just muscle. You know, like you're it so is. good at it. You can, yeah. It's, it's relaxing. It, it really is. And real estate's definitely not like that because every single transaction is so different. Right. I, I think um, that's why it's so cool. Again, that you have that outlet and I mean, it's, 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 it's so just so cool. You're so good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, from what I have experienced with you, again, working from my perspective, getting to see you, you know, behind the scenes, how you work with the customers and stuff, you definitely still have an artistic approach to what most would consider to be just a black and white job, real estate. You know, oh, you yeah. have an artistic approach. Um, again, you're very vibrant. That's one of the first words I use to describe you when I introduced you on this thing. Um, and I think that's a really cool edge to have is it's, it's you know, an artist's perspective on real estate. It, it is. And like my favorite is for listings when I'm getting ready for the photographer to come. I am go literally crazy i will move things around move paintings around get rid of stuff hide stuff put things under the couch because i'm like i just want that wall to look just perfect just like this and i even had um i literally just had two weeks ago an old friend of mine that moved to Asheville, 
and she listed her home for sale and it wasn't selling and it was just sitting on the market. And she's like, I don't know what to do. I'm nervous. I'm freaking out. I'm, you know, I already have an offer on a, on a brand new build. If I don't have this house sold by this date, I lose my escrow. And I was like, send me your listing. Let me look at it. And I'm looking at the photos and they look like garbage. I mean, there's a towel hanging over the, you know, over the, the thing yeah. in the in this bathroom and there's like, baby toys on the floor. And I'm like, did your listing agent not tell you that all of these things need to be moved? Why are there things on the kitchen counter? Like, no, 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 no. I said, here's a list. I go, and I went through every photo. And then I called my friend in Asheville and that's a real estate agent that I used to know from here. Nice. And he, within two days, it was under contract for over asking. Whoa. And he goes, thank you for giving all the suggestions that our house looked exactly like I literally did it from the phone. That's incredible. And, and from looking through photos and like told her think, how to redo her, her house for new photos. You would think it's so photos. obvious. Like it's, make sure. Yeah. Like how do you, you know, I, it's a lazy, that was lazy to listing agent to just let a photographer go in with the house looking like that. Oh, Absolutely I mean, not. I've seen toilet seats up before and stuff. I mean, yeah, probably, but that like, seemed like it was extreme though. I, I would love, because I mean, sadly, this is a prevalent thing we see in real estate, you know, photography or whatever, staging homes, you'll see really bad photos, or you'll see just like good photos, but taking a, in your case, shit that just wasn't thought out, you know, right. and I would love so much, it hasn't happened yet, but I would love so much for like an agent to try to play it off like, oh, actually, you know, you like you, uh, it w it's like a distress listing, like in a sense, you know, like those jeans you have, that have like a bunch of holes in them and just looks like shit, and you pay <laughs> high price, yeah, we're trying to go for like a distressed look with our listing, I would love for them to try to play it off like that, yeah, just a little side thing in my weird head and stuff. Um, but that's awesome that you have that you have that ability to again advise, you know, via you know, uh, I don't know how many miles it is from here to Asheville. It's, it's I don't know, what, a thousand or something, maybe. Who knows? But ten hour drive. Ten hour drive. That's <laughs> the longest time to drive. My yeah. butt's already falling asleep. Yeah. Um, but that's awesome that you can advise from that distance and also have the trust from somebody like, okay, listen, I, I'm going to describe the room to you or show you through Facetime or show you the photos. What would you change? And then boom, clearly it worked. It worked. And she was so excited. She's like, what can I do for you? I'm like, nothing. Like that, like you just like I'm happy for you. That's right. We're done. We're so good. talk to me about this real quick because we've seen a lot of sellers and listing agents look in the last really year and a half, two years, be so freaking high. <laughs> like I'm not talking about price. I'm like, I'm, you, you, would, you would have to think high because like, <laughs> like legit because or high on themselves, high on the ego, whatever it is, because yes, it has been a very aggressive, very rapid seller's market, right? I mean, like why even touch and, but anything? But we're moving because, out of but that. Yes, and so now we're seeing, that's what I want to talk about. We see, we're seeing, you know, high double digits, even some triple digits days on market. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing these homes that, okay, yes, two, you know, a uh, year ago. Okay, great. You still have shag carpeting on the wall. Uh, you don't even need to touch it because this thing's going to be sold, you know, but now that's starting to melt a little bit and we're seeing some of that reaction happen. Like, okay, well maybe I shouldn't be listing at a hundred thousand dollars over appraised value. Shit. Right. Yeah. So what are some things that people can do? Sellers, maybe from more perspectively, uh, sellers can do um, to, get their home in shape without having to, again, like go and redo the kitchen kind of thing. Well, first of all, being extremely realistic. Okay. Really looking at the comps and not just looking at the numbers, but looking at the photos. Okay. When you're comparing two homes, same square footage, look at the photos though. Do they have granite countertops? Mm -hmm. Do they have, you know, an open space? What kind right. of cabinets do they have? How is it showing? Right. Is there any clutter? You know, like, it, does it look like this? like a beautiful model home right. or is it kind of meh, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. what are you comparing to and be realistic and also agents set expect, don't set expectations in this, like re to be ridiculous. Yeah. And then now you've told them one thing and now you got to be like, Oh, well, sorry. It's been on the market oh, for 46 like, days. Like, oh yeah. Let's, we'll have like let 40 me go offers. ahead and change everything. I just told you yeah. and tell you something different. Right. Like it's, it's, a, we all know it's price or condition. Mm -hmm location yeah but price and condition yep so which one is it like which one's what's going on here and yeah so even if it's not fully updated it should be clean it should also smell good it shouldn't smell yeah. like potpourri or right. like weird ke like chemicals it just right. needs to smell clean and don't when you know you're having a showing don't cook something weird 
because fires cannot, cannot like it wouldn't get be a good time to like a clam bake or like me to do yeah. like steam some I trout. Mean, I know it smells good to me, but buyers don't understand that. Like I'm like, oh, right. did you save me some? Well, here's but the thing. they don't so, like, get that. They I, want it to smell clean. Right. And to that point, so I could be walking into a, a great hotel room that I, I booked, right? And finally there. But if my hotel room smelled like even even if it smelled like pizza, which I you know, who doesn't love if I smelled like some kind of weird it, it's it would throw me off, yeah. right? And that's just the deal. Is like when when the when the home is on the market, it's not a home anymore. It's a product. It's yes. a, and people need to understand that, right? And I mean, sometimes it's hard to turn it into a product if it's overly personalized, right? And so sometimes I'll reference, you know, those uh, extreme Disney fanatics. Now, of course, you know many people are Disney heads, and you know we mentioned Golden Oak. There's cool subtleties. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the people that have like 18 carios next to each other, and each of them are like. Packed Nick with Max. Disney, Disney, Disney. I mean, yeah. you, there's no way you'd have to have nine U Hauls and a crazy insurance policy to get them out, right? So sometimes you can't depersonalize it in such a way, which some agents would just be like, well, I'll just, you know, like try to ignore it. I always say, like, lean into it. So if you know that like, there's like hardcore, like undoable or, you know, almost whatever, the stuff I'm talking about, right? It's hard to depersonalize it. Lean into it. Have an open house. It's like Disney pin trading themed open house, or like you know, like so. It's going to attract other Disney freaks, right, mm-hmm. or Disney heads to come out to it, and they'll see that home as like, oh my god, this is where we can put our figurine of Cinderella's castle, right where they have theirs. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And yeah. so sometimes, and I think that's kind of like again, like your flavor of of creativity is that you would think that way, like you see things again artistically and differently, which is one of those things I really, really, really appreciate about working with you and stuff. Um. Talk to me about Royal. Royal. Who's Royal? My baby. <laughs> which, which, okay, <laughs> and, and it, just, it, popped, it popped my name on the head, and it, it, it's not this way because the name's different here, but your last name is Payne. Yes. Right? And when you told me her name was Royal, I'm like, oh, my God, that's the best. <laughs> but, <laughs> but she is a Royal Payne. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to, me, talk to me about, you know, being a mom and, and who she is and stuff. Uh, she's, she's pretty awesome. She's just one of those, like, exceptional children they always say like the universe will only give you what you can handle and think you can handle we everything then we got we got this we got <laughs> this but she's just she's like my little mini me my best friend so we're i mean we laugh all day every day like she, we, just, we just have a blast that's special she's super smart we have a great relationship anybody that's ever you know seen us together everybody always just looks at us and they're like you guys really are like a good relationship Tight. You know, like, that's awesome yeah like we have a really good time so when I I, th- when I, th- I think I first met her, she was in the fencing, right? Yeah. She's now or acting and, and all acting. that stuff too. And now she's carving it up on the skate parks and stuff. So like, mm-hmm. it it seems like again like you're someone, and we've talked about this before too, um, that embraces interests and yeah. stuff and trying new things. And so talk to me about that because I mean sometimes I mean a lot of things we can talk about here, right? I mm-hmm. mean sometimes it is hard to have a relationship with a kid, um, especially when they're getting into their teenage years and stuff. It's hard to pull kids of any age off of the screens, right? Or get them or to go. Exp- <laughs> yeah. Or, or yeah. Or whoever they might be interested <laughs> in kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Um, it, that's, that can be challenging. Uh, it can be challenging to get them to just go outside and try new things. And so, I mean, are you literally putting like a, 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 a what's, what's this, the fencing sword? Is it called a sword? A land? Epe. An, ep- an epe? Yeah. There's epe foil and then something else, but she did epe. Okay. So, I mean, are you, are you getting a group on and saying, Hey kid, go take a shot. Or is this like her saying, Hey mom, I want to try fencing or Hey, I want to try skateboarding. Like, how does this happen? Skateboarding. She, she started when she was super little. So okay. she was just, but she kept begging me to take, take her to the skate park. And okay. I was like, you're crazy. That thing looked like. Have you seen a skate park with the big <laughs> pools, the big bowls? Right. And I'm just like, right. well, you're going to break your neck. But a friend of mine skateboards and she's like, I'll take her. And I'm oh, like, cool. Okay. I guess if I can't see it, it's not happening. So, right. but she just started going down the ramps and I'm like, I, so then after that, I was like, all right. So I t- took her every day, every single day. And now it's too hot. Yeah. Um, Even the indoor skate parks, I mean, there's like no AC. It's just it's hot not, it's as a big heck. giant fan, like a big. Yeah, it's not like yeah, it's, enough to cool down no. sweaty kids. Yeah, but um, it's, uh, it's funny. Um, the fencing thing, she did that for a while. I'm trying to get her to go back into it because we wanted to switch schools. Sure. But yesterday, funny that you should bring this okay. up. Okay. I think I want to do ice hockey. <laughs> <laughs> what are you what do you mean all right so then she's like i'm like i mean i know you know how to ice skate but you're not like 
like amazing at ice skating to be able to actually play a sport while I, you know you're not just going around in circles like right. holding hands and I mean you're, to you're, like you're, you're, it's a lot of things songs. happening yeah <laughs> exactly and so tonight we're going to RDV for her to oh yeah see how she likes being on the ice and then I'll put you know, at least take, let her take some lessons. And okay, we'll so see. so back up for my clarification. She she does skate on ice. She has ice she skated before. She can ice skate. She can ice skate. Okay, um, but it's just like like the the happy go lucky round and round kind yeah. of thing. Like the group skate stuff. Yeah, but I have not a friend the pads, that coaches. Not the yeah. checking. Not yeah. the sticks. That's so cool though. Yeah, that's really awesome. Um, actually, yeah, I took my girls to go ice skating for the first time not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and they saw the 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 ice hockey happening on the other side, and they wanted to try it out. I haven't done that with them yet because again, they're six and four almost. Right. Um, but I think maybe I will, especially for like a little girl gang, you know, kind of thing out there. And, and that sounds really cool. I have a friend that actually um coaches there. And okay, his daughter started at four. All right. Or maybe even younger, uh -huh. so I can introduce him, and you guys will be like, "He's super cool." I might be into that because I'm, so my daughters they're very very different. I have one that's you know tall, uh, and, and you know and scrawny. I have one that's a little bit shorter, and we'll call her consolidated. Um, I could definitely see her being the bruiser out there. My my, my youngest one just like going out there and just like, mm, just like boom, checking people left and right. Like that's that, 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 that's totally her personality at, at almost four already. Um, that's nuts. That's that's so cool though because again, uh, I mean, I always love it when a parent uh you know can go out there and show their kids that hey you can be who you want to be and still make it happen out there and real estate of course is one of the again one of the reasons i think is one of the best industries out there is because no matter what your aesthetic is what your brand what your vibe is what your interests are what, how you do business um whether it be so crazy and extra conservative basic polarizing whatever it is right there's going to be tens of hundreds of thousands of people that's that vibe with that and everyone needs what we sell that's shelter and space yeah. right and so you can go out there clearly be you right attract those people that would be a vibe of that you know and or or you know work with it and you're showing royal you know that hey you can be awesome, you know, and, and, and make it happen for, you know, your why, your cause, your drive kind of thing. And you're also going out there, too, and letting her find her way. Yeah. And that's the most magical thing. There's, letting... there's one thing that I you notice when you when you look at old people, like how old, old. <laughs> like, is, like, like, I mean, do like, they like... live, are they going to die with regrets of not doing mm -hmm. anything? Mm -hmm. Or are they going to feel comfortable and at peace? Right. That they've tried it all and they didn't leave a bunch of things for maybe one day or I right. wish I could. Or yeah. That sounds cool, but not me. Like, mm -hmm. no, do it all because you're really only what, what, what do they say? You're guaranteed born, death, taxes. Yeah. Just do like, do yeah. it. You can only evade one of them. Do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am immortal. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, that's, that, that, that's a great point though. Um, do it all. Just absolutely. Do it all. Have fun. I love it's that. Life. I love that. Like, it, you know, don't hurt anybody. Do it all. Absolutely. Yeah. So actually, I mean, because I was thinking as we were talking about this, I feel like we left the first topic a little bit too quickly. And what better way after we talk about being immortal and everything to go back to the spooky shit? Yay! <laughs> I love the spooky so, shit. Yeah. Um, so, uh, have you? I mean, have you? I want to talk more about, more into detail about that. Have you experienced like any like? What, what, have you ever gone to a haunted house, or maybe have, have you ever had like a ghost like uh, encounter, or kind of any anything like that in your life anywhere? No, I wish. That'd no? be so cool. It would. Yes. Have you? Um, actually, yeah, I have. I, I I've had, I think two that I can recall, or one of them I don't recall. I was so young, but it, it, it's it. my mom and my granny swore by it. So uh, as most grannies do, they live in the same place for forever and ever. Amen. Right. <laughs> so uh, when I was two years old, I went to go visit my my granny in her house, North Carolina, um, that house my mom grew up in. Right. And so she's been there for a while. Um, and my, I never met him, but my grandfather on that side passed away when my mom, my mom was six years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just pin that right there. Okay. You already see where the story is going. Right. So the house is old, you know, she had an extension, uh, built onto it, you know, back in the, I don't know, sixties or seventies. Um, and it's where she just had like her storage shit. Okay. And so, and it's where she kept her toys too. So as soon as I got there and go straight to the back room and I'm playing, um, my mom and my granny are in the front den. And they hear me talking. Okay, like, oh, okay, let's go back and check on Daniel. Um, and uh, my mom says, "Hey, honey, you know who are you talking to?" And she's expecting me to say like myself or whatever. It's like a man. And I mean, this is not like a modern home. I mean, it's you know basically hand built, so it wouldn't be crazy if somebody found their way in, you know, broke in. So she's you know went on full mom guard. Like, okay, um, you know, like, trying yeah. to not freak me out, kind of thing. 
she looked around she couldn't find anybody she asked me you know okay so what's this man look like and i described my grandfather perfectly and i I'd, I'd never seen a photo of him at all even that described how he smelled that's cool. and it was him right and stuff so that, that's super duper crazy uh so that was one of them and then of course like you'll have um let's see there is one in savannah okay this is when we went on this you know one of those ghost tours it's basically just a booze tour right you're not expecting anything crazy right. you're expecting to get drunk enough and be like oh this is a fun time Ooh, cra cra yeah. you know, crazy history so they give you i mean they and i'm i'm just like rolling my eyes with all this this is like such bullshit um they give you the little like the little, little ghost ometers and oh it's lighting up i don't know what the fuck that means right kind of thing yeah um the whole tour is like that. I mean, cool history but whatever right nothing nothing was happening during the tour but watching the video uh, back because you you know you're, you're going around and like oh look at the orb which always I think those those what they call orbs and photos or video they're just like little pieces of dust that fly around but people swear they're spirits mm -hmm. whatever so we're looking at the orbs and then Stacy in the video I hear this like blood curdling like a uh, uh, scream it's a it's a lady scream I mean it is it is just unmistakable it is it's not a door creaking it is a scream but I don't remember hearing it nobody else remembered hearing it nobody re reacted to it in the, the the video like you just hear it something's happening and that was the same room where you know the lore happened that, that the heiress of the mansion that we're in you know hung herself or whatever it was and you know it was crazy that's pretty cool though. yeah that's yeah. super cool yeah it was that was cool and then the other one that i have um was at the stanley hotel in Estes park colorado and so it was uh, July 4th is when it opened and so we were actually there on its 100th birthday like actually stayed in it that night and it's 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 old you know it's where the shining was conceived people think it's like where it was recorded and stuff right. but it's stephen king thought of the shining scene in the hotel um so separate but cool but it can of course goes to her on property walking around mm, spooky stuff but nothing that's you know groundbreaking right um but then they go and so they had a detached hall like a banquet hall and a basement in it and then uh, apparently back you know how i forget decades ago um there's a young girl named lucy ran away and you know used the basement as a hideout spot and got really cold and passed away to to be you know frozen um but apparently her favorite candy was like these dum-dum pop oh, lollipops kind of thing right so mm -hmm. their whole shtick was all right guys now what you're gonna do is we're gonna pass around these lollipops put them right there in their hand and sometimes we're gonna play our favorite song and then sometimes like lucy will come and you'll feel her right like okay whatever i've had right. enough cores i've had enough whiskey i'm in colorado for god's sakes and just have a good time mm -hmm. so sitting there and stacy again i'm not even messing with you that lollipop went whoop, stood straight up in my hand i think hold on. yes yes stood straight up in my hand um i'm like okay clearly this is like a dummy lollipop it was like a little like little, little remote in there like whatever it is it was a normal lollipop and like justin right now our camera guy i mean he's he's freaking out clearly like if you, you guys can't see him on camera but he is he is like white in the like pale he's sweating profusely and he, he just looks terrified justin it's not that bad don't worry all right i'm here <laughs> <laughs> but it was just cool stuff like that right, right. so um I see all that to talk about again what you want to do with this. I think you can do it. I mean, the the, the spooky podcast is gonna be really really cool. Um, have you have you thought of a name for it? I think I'm just, I'm gonna call it obscure real estate. Obscure real estate. I yeah. love that. I mean, I, I think I think that's gonna be a winner for sure. So hopefully, let's set it. Let's, let's make it official right now. Okay, so you recorded and you can't go back on it. I want to tattoo this. You want to immortalize this this idea here. <laughs> when is when 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 is it gonna launch? When are we when are we gonna do this thing? No, we do. <laughs> this also kind of plays like like the uh the soap opera theme music too like <gasps> we should just say next week just next like week? screw it like hell just yeah. do it like why hell you know what i mean yes. like just put it on the calendar hell yeah okay so what we're looking out for so if you guys are watching this um because i think it'd be kind of cool too if you had some people like like give you the idea or not i'd give you the ideas but like, like you know if they know a place that's spooky or yeah. really odd or obscure you know oh yeah um, i have some saved, saved yeah stuff going so on how do they get in so here's the here's the deal here here's the deal here so if it comes to them needing real estate right buy sell invest if they're just curious about it right if they have something in mind that they could recommend to you to cover as far as your obscure real estate how do they get in touch with you Four zero seven four two seven nine one two zero. Yeah, just call, text. Um, I love talking on the phone. I'm old school, so call me. <laughs> that's but awesome. Some people hate it; they just text, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. Um, or so PSOrlando.com is my website. So 
talk to me about that real quick. How could we, how could we go without talking about PS, which I think is super duper cool. Okay. So, so Stacy Payne SP, right. But then it's PS, which stands pain for cells. pain cells, right. Which also has kind of like a fun double entendre there. If you want to stretch it Motherfucker out. Sales. <laughs> Motherfucking souls. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I love that. <laughs> um, which is kind of like a cool like, little thing you've run with too. So like, like you know, yeah. it's like PS. It's and like, postscript. So yeah. I like to do the PS because I'm like never done talking. So I always have something else to say or there's always something to add or yeah. like this home has but da 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 but let's yes. add this because it's pretty awesome. Right. You know, it's just like, I just think it's cute and it's cool and it just I do too. Add, and like, I like to like just keep adding right hell yeah and like so anytime there's a ps typically it's like a uh something positive like hey yeah. ps i love yes, you I love you or yeah. ps <laughs> you're looking awesome today or ps yeah. sold yep motherfucking sold <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. so i think that's brilliant you know and i love i love seeing those individual personalized brands come into fruition especially mm -hmm. through cool people like you so stacy we've talked about again the macabre the spooky the obscure stuff um, we've talked about, uh, you know, Royal, whether it be she should be a Royal pain or <laughs> not. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Shout out Royal. Um, and then we've also talked about, you know, your, your background and your artistry. What, what, what do we call it on the last interview we did? Was it like follic artistry, follicle artisan or yeah, I think something? Was. something. <laughs> I was, I've never heard <laughs> that before. Very, I'll do that. Yeah. I totally, yeah. Yeah. But yeah I, I do hair and makeup. Yeah. I actually was, um, um, nominated for Orlando's best makeup artist. So Were I don't you really, I mean, yeah, I don't, I, I was like, what? Okay, thank you everybody for whoever uh, whoever all you know nominated me. Now, are you Thanks. are you? That's awesome. That, yeah, I, hadn't, I didn't weekly. even know that. That's yeah. really really cool. Congratulations! Thank Hold you. on, let's see if we have a. Oh no, no, that's the wrong one. There. See, I'm still learning the soundboard here. <laughs> if people are laughing because they're having a good time applauding you, there you go. Um, okay, that's really really cool. Uh, oh my god. They're still laughing. <laughs> I love it. This thing is out of control. Maybe this is haunted. Maybe this is the first thing we talk about is this haunted uh, soundboard hey, hey. here. What is that button? <laughs> that's the one. Um, I had Adley on here, my my six year old, and she was telling me jokes, and she was actually going to hit that one. So after, every time that she told a joke, she would do that without me having to coach her. I thought it was the funniest That's thing. Amazing. It was so good. So good. That's the applause. And then I don't know what try that try this one. What's that one? That was that was the sound that she played when I told a joke. Oh. <laughs> it was Justin was loving it. He was he was like, finally, someone's serving Dan the way he deserves to be served. <laughs> Boom. You know, with that that relentless judgment there that Justin loves so much. Justin. Uh, <laughs> he's the best. Um cool. So con congratulations on that. Thank now, are you do you also do like the haunt like the, the Halloween Horror Nights makeup too? Like special effects? Can, can you do that? Or is it more just like beauty makeup? I can. Um, I haven't. I've never worked for Universal Studios, so no. And the, I don't even have the time. Because they, I mean, they've already started working. Sure. Like I think they started in like June or July. It's a heavy thing. It's huge. Um, it it's cool. I yeah. just you know I just now in my life I don't have that kind of time to do a right nine to five job or anything like that. Um, but I have done a lot of horror makeup. I did do. I helped out a friend. Um, uh. Road. I'm sorry, I totally forgot the name of it. But last year I did <laughs> I helped it was a haunted house that you drive through. Oh out, cool. off of Lake Picket. Yeah, yeah. In Orlando. I've always wanted to do one of those things. And it was pretty cool. And I did all of the makeup for, for that. Super cool. So So I mean you are truly a Renaissance person, without a mm -hmm. doubt. And you are people will say, Oh, Jack or Jill of all trades, like you are versatile, but you're actually top in like everything that you do. And so, which I think is amazing. So it's not just dabble here, dabble there. Like you go full in, full on, and like you're the best at it. So again, if you guys are out there watching, listening to this, which I know you are, uh, definitely check Stacy out when it comes to your real estate stuff, because you are going to love the experience of it. And you're also going to have that person that really, again, drives it until it gets. Motherfucking soul. <laughs> uh, Stacy. Uh, I really appreciate you being on the show today. Again, Thank very you. fun. Uh, we are all looking forward to uh, the audit. What was it again? I'm sorry. The, the name of the podcast. Obscure Real Estate. Obscure what do you think? Estate. Do we like that? I mean, I, I like it. I think it's, I mean, it paints a picture because I mean, haunted. I was going to do fucked up real estate, but <laughs> someone's like, you can't do that. And I'm like, why? Well, why not? Yeah. Can I just do the F with the little. You could do, you could do F'd up real estate. And F'd up real estate. I think yeah. it sounds better. But yeah. then I was hanging out with um, way too many tequila margaritas <laughs> is the guy from um what's the name of that uh flipping show in orlando flipping show the the um 
is popular. It, is it like, it's is, on TV, the t- television show? Oh, really? There's one in Orlando. I didn't even know there was one in Orlando. Is there's it, one where they they um, what is it called? Um, flip flip my flip on uh. No, his name is Justin. <laughs> Justin, and he's on uh. It's where they go in like super messed up houses. I like, feel like I'm going to lose a friend on Facebook right now because if it's somebody that I know, I'm not like, I have no idea. Like, like, I know I am this, too. Like, can we bleep this dead? out? Like, can I look it up? Like, uh, it yeah, I mean, because I mean, I mean, Justin's that I know. I mean, we have Justin Pekarik, right? He's awesome on video. He's he's definitely a uh, TV personality. Um, oh my God, this is like my worst social nightmare Zombie right now. Zombie house flipping. Zombie house flipping. It's a, okay. It's an actual television show. Who's the, Do we know who Justin is? Justin and I met Stamper? him at- Let me see him again. I've heard of this show. I've heard of him. I just want to make sure I'm not like messing like a, a good solid friendship up here. No, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lose a friend. Okay. Whew. No, no, no. Okay, good. Whew. Close yeah. one. <laughs> no, he's, he's pretty cool. And he, he's like, I cool. have collections of weird shit that I find yeah. in houses when we flip houses. I'm like, will you come on my podcast? He goes, Hell yep. yeah. Hell yeah. Ooh, the, 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 cause I, not, I know that we're about to wrap this up, but there's also one of the, the, the creepiest things that I've seen when it comes to like the stuff that was left in the house or they was found in a house was uh, up in an attic. Okay. And this was like the, the attic wasn't like a renovated attic or like a, like a, it was just like the insulation and beams, right? Far corner though, there was found this little, I guess, just a bunch of papers. It looked like a kid had drawn. Um, and there was a lot of, I think it was either Japanese or Korean. I can't remember which one it was, but translated, it was something about like hiding from this like demonic ghost that was chasing her. And like, it was, it wasn't, it did, it, did, it wasn't like a, like manga or, like, or a story or it was like about the house and about the family that was there. Like apparently like, like, so it was, there was no sign. There was no history of anybody, um, like uh, kids living in the house. It wasn't even that old of a house. It was just really bizarre and really weird. Like nobody knew what the hell it was, but it was like it's weird. Yeah. So stuff like that, I yeah. think it'd be really cool to get into. Yeah. Um, so to say all that you have content out there that's just waiting for you to go. So light much. It up. I mean, look, I mean, there's just, I, I mean, even just, all right, you have like a a handful of friends. How yeah. many weird stories do you know about? Like, well, I mean, if you know these homes Justin that have been, and me, then that are like tons of weird stories. Yeah, there's just there's just so many, like a lot goes on behind closed doors. Yeah, like, let's get in there. Let's figure I out love what's it. going on. I think this is going to be massively successful, yeah. just like your real estate career. All right, so again, Stacy, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank, thank you, you so much for being also a part of Preferred Real Estate Brokers. You are a part of the vibrant awesomeness that that brokerage brings. Um, so again, you guys have the phone number. One more time, remind them, please. Who? How do they get in touch with you? Four zero seven four two seven nine one two zero. Boom. All right. Well, Stacy Payne, this was uh, everything but a pain to interview you today. Uh, again, thank you so much. Pound that fist, and let's go ahead and hit, you do it one more time. Hit your sound bite. Uh huh. <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> that was foreshadowing. That wasn't even on there that before. That was amazing. That's, that was yours right there. Motherfucking soul. That's right. And- yes. Rock and roll. Thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you guys next time. Bye bye.